So again, I'm Michael Barker. I'm at the University of Wyoming. I'm also the Director of Education for the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance, and I'll be introducing the SSSBA to you today. And to start off for the first half hour, we're going to be talking about tools and resources for designing cost-effective steel bridges. <coughs> Here's the uh, agenda for my part of this presentation. We're going to talk a little bit about national steel or national bridge needs, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, or the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, then we'll talk about our alliance and then common steel bridges. And then we're going to go through using a tool called ESPAN 140 for a traditionally fabricated steel bridge. And then we'll sum it up with some of the uh, advantages of steel bridges and then a summary. So ASCE yearly uh, does an infrastructure uh, assessment. And according to them, recent estimate for the nation's backlog of bridge repair needs is a lot of money through 2025. And they gave the bridge infrastructure a grade of C, which has been consistent over the last few assessments that they have done. And so, of course, you probably know that Congress, Senate, President has have gotten together for the bipartisan infrastructure law, which uh, allocates about $40 billion to bridge uh, improvements. $27 billion over the next five years to repair or replace as many as 15,000 bridges and an additional $12.5 billion for a new competitive bridge investment program. And with that, a minimum of 15% must be used to build what we call off-system bridges. And so we at the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance certainly pay close attention to that as we try to help owners design and construct short span steel bridges, simple span short span steel bridges in installations up to 140 feet in length. And that's what the Alliance is, is a group of bridge and buried soil structure industry leaders that have joined together to help educate owners and designers for those bridges. And when we talk about short span steel bridges, we're talking about rolled beam and plate girder bridges. We're talking about buried steel bridges, trusses, and then press break tub girder bridges, as you will hear about in the next four series of this summer webinar series. The members of our alliance are all of the key players when it comes to short span steel bridges, all of the stakeholders. And you see here, uh, producers and fastener people, coders, service centers, fabricators, design firms, contractors, bridge owners and universities, and then trade organizations. And what we do is, well, we, do education. Uh, an example of that, of course, is this summer webinar series with webinars and workshops and forums and conferences. We have technical resources, case studies, simple design tool, ESPAN 140. That one's circled because I'm going to talk about that one today. We can answer questions on short span steel bridges through our Bridge Technology Center. We have members that prefabricate bridges and can deliver you a bridge. And we're, I'm going to talk about that uh, yeah, a little bit later in the series. And then we develop innovative and accelerated bridge construction designs for the industry. So where do you go? You go to shortspansteelbridges.org and, and pay attention to this one because this one's on the quiz. What is our website? And at that website, you can find a uh, bunch of good information on short span steel bridges or on bridges in general, but especially short span steel bridges with that eSpan web-based design tool, the technology center and everything else there. And I encourage you to visit that to see what is there. So when we talk about short span steel bridges, the common simple span uh, steel bridge types are corrugated steel pipe up on the top left there, that's called a buried steel bridge. Many people call those culverts. Then to the right of that is still a buried steel bridge, but a corrugated steel plate bridge, which is more or less an arch bridge. And you're going to hear about one of those in lecture three. Rolled beam shaped bridges, plate girder bridges, 
trusses. You're going to hear a couple talks on trusses to, uh, during these this series. And then something the Alliance uh, developed through research and has been implemented by uh, uh, fabricators in the field is the press brake tub girder. And you're going to hear about that, I believe, in lecture two. But let's go back to the basic idea of bridge design, where we talk about a traditionally fabricated steel bridge where there's a design, a fabricator, a contractor that puts this bridge in place. And so we're going to talk about the design to uh, we're going to talk about designing the superstructure for a two lane, 80 foot simple span bridge. And how can we do that? Well, begin to begin with that, first, the owner or the engineer has to come up with what this bridge's function is. For instance, this is an 80-foot simple span bridge, and we're planning to design it with steel girders, beam, rolled beams or plate girders at this point. And for the functionality of this bridge, we're going to have two, foot tra two, two 12-foot travel lanes, and it has an average daily traffic of about of 5,600 in one direction. There are no clearance issues here, so we can go as deep or shallow as we want to, and we can close it if we need to redeck it in the future. It's going to have a concrete riding surface. In fact, it's going to be a composite steel design. And with the two 12-foot travel lanes and the shoulders that the owner wants, we're talking about a 30-foot roadway width, and we're planning to use jersey barriers for the bridge railing, and they're a foot and three and a quarter inch wide which gives us an out to out width of 36 foot, six and a half inches. So that's kind of the functionality of the bridge there. And now we need an initial design for the bridge superstructure. So the owner design or the owner or the engineer decides all of this. Now we need the what girders or what beams are we going to use underneath that functional part of the bridge. And that's where this E-SPAN 140 comes in where the Alliance has developed standard designs for short, stand, short span steel bridges. And you can get to this and it's free at shortspansteelbridges.org. Now the goal when we develop these standard designs is, is of course to be economically competitive, which means we use rep or co competitive, which means we use repetitive details and member sizes. It expedites the design process. You can get a design in just a matter of minutes. And it will consider homogeneous plate girders or lightest weight rolled beams or even limited depth rolled beams. Because we know clearances, uh, when we replace a bridge, clearance is important because we're usually trying to increase hydraulic openings and we don't want to do a lot of approach work. And so we can cut down on the project costs, even though we are going to put a little bit more steel in the beams by making them limited depth. Now, the designs meet all the AASHTO load and resistance factor design criteria with strength one, service two, fatigue, constructability, deflection, four, and HL93 vehicular live loading. Now, what it is, is it's not really a true design software. It's a lookup table because these designs have been standardized for span lengths from 20 feet to 140 feet in five foot increments, four different girder spacings. And for each of these increments, it gives the steel girders, the shear stud and stiffener layouts, the welding and fabrication details. It uses elastomeric bearings for economy and, of course, the concrete deck design. So when we think about having an 80-foot span, this is what E-Span 140 is going to give us. Yes, it's going to give us a rolled beam solution. Yes, it's going to give us a homogeneous plate girder solution. It will also give us recommendations for a press brake tub girder design and a buried bridges design. And it's really simple to run, and anybody can run it. For instance, here, we're going to go through an example of that. Of course, at the top, it's going to give us some info or let us put in some information on the design. But down here at the bottom, we put in an 80 foot, zero inch bridge span. Then number of striped traffic lanes is two, roadway width is 34, the parapet width is one foot, three and a quarter inches, 
the overhangs are two and uh, two foot six inches, and we're going to design for over two thousand ADT, and it has a, a, a design speed. And with those simple inputs, it's going to give us an astral qualified design for both rolled beams and plate girders. Here's the rolled beam solution. It's saying use four girders at 10 foot six inch spacing, where we're going to put diaphragms at 20 foot spacing. And when we do that, the girder is going to be a W36 by 210. And then it also gives all the uh, uh, stiffener and connection plate details, bearing details, elastomeric bearing details. It even gives you a camber diagram. For the plate girder, it also says four girders at 10 foot six spacing. Still has a 20 foot unbraced length, but now it's going to transition that bottom flange uh, for economy from 16 foot one for 16 feet to a 16 by one and a half. It also does all the connection plate and stiffener and bearing stiffener details, the camber diagram, deck, di deck design, elastomeric bearings. And so it gives us the solution. It says, okay, ashto design results in this girder composite with that deck where we have a constant six by 16 by one top flange, a web plate of 32, and a half, 32 by a half, and then the bottom flange transitions for economy from 16 by one to 16 by one and a half. And this gives us a preliminary design that the engineer then can modify according to their wishes in just a matter of minutes. It also gives us buried steel bridge recommendations, which you'll hear about in lecture three, and press break tub girder recommendations, which you'll hear about in lecture two. So I encourage you to visit that website. I encourage you to try Eastman 140 with one of your past projects or one of your current projects, or just make up a project to see how it can help you to consider a steel bridge design to compare to those concrete designs and see which one the market wants. Well, now I'm going to get into a little bit of marketing for steel bridges, uh, where we talk about the benefits of steel bridges. And today's steel bridges are state of the art. They're lightweight, which permits lighter equipment for construction, which you'll hear about during the summer series here. You're also going to see one or two examples where a local crew can install that bridge, like a county crew, which can save lots of money. If you're a county engineer and you can build your own bridges, you might be able to build five bridges for the cost of three contracted bridges. Of course, steel bridges are fabricated to close tolerances, which results in more efficient erection. For steel bridges, you can get longer spans, which minimizes disruption underneath and makes environmental impact statements easier, increases hydraulic openings. Steel bridges are durable. They're robust. They're highly resistant to extreme natural disasters. Weathering steel or galvanizing or metallizing or painting, and there's even a stainless steel, 50 CR that can produce long life. And yes, bridges have proven that they have long life because when you go out there, you see many, many bridges that are well over a hundred years old. So a big advantage of steel bridges is speed of construction or what we call accelerated bridge construction, which is very important in the bridge industry. We have a wide range of modular and prefabricated steel bridges that can be installed in just a weekend because it, they're modular, they fit together. You just have simple connections and simple details to where you just bolt them together. They require lighter equipment. You can put these in place with front end loaders and they, there's the ease of erection itself. They are cost effective. 
Yes, they're competitive with other bridge type materials, which you'll see in some of the examples during this series. And you, and of course, we always stress that we need to look at whole project savings, not just this bridge superstructure, because steel bridges are lighter than uh, alternative materials, which results in that we can use lighter abutments, smaller equipment, and faster installation. And of course, the weathering steel, galvanizing, metallizing, or even stainless steel can reduce initial costs and life cycle costs. Sustainability and resiliency is becoming very important. In fact, it's called out in that bipartisan infrastructure law to where we need to consider sustainability and resiliency when we choose our bridge projects. And steel is North America's number one recycled material. When you buy a steel beam or produce a steel plate girder, usually over 90% of the steel in that beam is, formed, is from recycled steel. Recycled steel conserves energy. And here it says enough to power 18 million homes per year. Steel's energy use with the new furnaces that they're using re has reduced uh, energy 33% by 1990. And greenhouse gas emissions have been reduced by 45% since 1975. For resiliency, of course, steel has long service life, which is really important for resiliency. When we do have deterioration or we do have damage to a steel structure, it is very easy to inspect compared to their competitors. And when we find a problem with a steel bridge, it's easy to repair. Even if they get hit by an overheight vehicle, we can go in there, we can heat straighten them and keep that bridge in service. When we have bridges that were built for lower legal loads and now we have higher legal loads, we can strengthen steel bridges for increased loads by putting on cover plates. And of course, the recycling and repurposing. When we take a bridge out of service and we have those steel beams, a lot of counties put them in their yards and, and when they have a new bridge project, they say, hey, don't we have those W30 by so-and-sos in the yard? Let's Let's repurpose them and build this bridge out of those that we've taken out. And of course, habitat protection that we can, we can span over sensitive areas easier with longer spans and get that steel and that bridge uh, out of the way to increase hydraulic openings and improve fish passage and all of those type of things. And so I'll end on this slide where I, again, I encourage you to visit shortspansteelbridges.org, where you can subscri subscribe to a weekly news center. Dan Snyder, the vice president for construction for AISI, sends out a newsletter every Friday at, I believe, 11 a.m. Eastern time, uh, where it gives you updates on, on what the alliance is doing or what, what special things that that we think would be interesting to bridge owners and bridge engineers. You can supply, if you have a bridge project and you're interested in one of these uh, prefabricated bridges or a traditionally fabricated bridges, you can find a supplier that you can contact to say, hey, I got this 60 foot opening. Tell me what you can send me to, to, for a bridge for that, for that uh, project. That E-SPAN 140 to get you a preliminary design for a rolled beam or a plate girder bridge for that project. Of course, the Bridge Technology Center. And then we go out and we give webinars. If, if you live in a state where the county engineers should, should, should uh, you think it would be beneficial for them to have uh, a workshop on short span steel bridges or short span steel bridges and multi span steel bridges, contact us. We have some standard workshops or we can customize it to your needs. And we come out free of charge to you and, and uh, uh, can do a four hour or six hour or even an eight hour workshop. 